Hey, what's up, guys? Thanks for joining in on this adventure with me. Uh, I'm going to be giving you guys a rundown of what I'm working with. I basically have three days. I'm going to be um, overlanding for two nights. Um, as you guys know, I'm from California. The weather's been pretty crazy here. We've had a lot of snow in San Gabriel Mountains. Um, anywhere that I'm looking in a two to five mile radius has pretty bad weather. Um, I'm pretty much not escaping my weather, so it hasn't been really... Uh, easy to find a place that I'm going to be overlanding for two nights that it's going to be comfortable uh, for me and my wife. And so uh, what we're, we've are we decided to do is to head over to Kofa Wildlife Refuge, which is about five uh, and a half hours away from California, which is not too bad. Um, I can do a, a six hour leg easily and also get a lot done. So what we're going to be doing for this trip is we're going to be heading to the Enchanted Caverns. So I was looking around Kofa and I was able to find uh, some attractions, some ghost towns, and some mines. So uh, I stumbled upon an Enchanted uh, Cavern, which is one of two, I believe, in the world that is a fluorescent cave. So I'm really excited to be able to see that. Um, it is pricey, about $80 to get in per person for about a two-hour tour. Um, but it is for the experience. That's what I'm going to go ahead and check it out, see if it lives up to the hype. And again, it's only five and a half hours from L.A., so it's really doable for a lot of city folks. Um, on this adventure, I'm also going to be uh, possibly doing some hiking. I'm going to be uh, camping, of course. And I'm going to be checking out some mines and uh, look for crystals and uh, just, you know, pretty much see wherever we're going to be. Basically see what nature is going to be taking us towards and we're just going to be winging it. I'm going to be looking for good campsites. i um, going to try to find some nice places that I'm usually not able to camp in the summertime because it's extremely hot here. And I'm going to be also testing out my diesel heater for the first time, which I'm really excited. My wife's really excited about that. She gets cold easily. So I'm hoping that having this diesel heater is going to change the game for us as far as being able to camp all four seasons. Um, so again, tune in for that part of the video. Really excited about that. Um, let's go. Yep, that's a hole in the sidewall. Time to change out a flat. All right, guys, let's take a look at how I did this. I used my stock bottle jack and I used my Gold Threads um, traction boards. Works great as a great combo when you ha when your vehicle has a lift exactly how I lifted my vehicle up it's still hanging right now so I'm gonna drop it a little bit so that the tire is gonna be completely flat on the ground and now that there's no movement I can come back to the bolts and tighten each one I don't have a torque wrench but I'm just gonna do my best to make sure that everything is tight There you have it, guys. All right, so we took off a bit early this morning, but good thing for the extra time, uh, we actually got a flat on the way to Yuma, the enchanted uh, caves. So we are gonna barely make it right on time to the 12.30 check-in. Uh, it took me about 15 minutes to change the flat, so that was pretty quick. Um, again, a lesson learned there. Make sure that you guys understand exactly how to um, reach all your repair recovery, recovery gear um, whenever you guys are in need. So, all right, let's go to continue on.
Watch your wallet! <laughs> now these, as time, as time goes, this starts to get brighter and brighter. And I'm also going to use a little light. I'm going to get that here. So yeah, so you start to see it goes all the way up, man. And uh, this was, I think, actually found by or chance because of the. Uh, as it starts to get brighter and brighter, they starts to get you know. Uh, as, uh, it doesn't take long. And you can go all the way up and still see stuff. Sorry, it's about. Uh, I've heard as many as uh, 50 or 50 minerals here. Um, anything that ends in night, calamite, well light, sulfide, fluorite, whatever, different colors. And uh, this is all the mineral. This is the only known place in the world that has this many variety, this many minerals, this many colors, this many shyness. What I like to do is put, put people's shoes like that. Yes. Oh, my teeth. <laughs> That's <laughs> funny. <laughs> Yeah. Where else could you go? You can say. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dry it nice and light. Yeah. <laughs> if you remember the '60s, then you probably weren't there. I remember part of it. There's a yellow one here, One it's Leverite. Leave it right there. But it is pricey. Uh, nonetheless, we just got to camp, so I'm gonna go ahead and set up. All right, guys, we're at camp, uh, getting ready to cook some dinner. Uh, wife is sleeping right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you um, our setup. Uh, basically, I had the biggest intentions to come out here and camp in the cold with a diesel heater, but unfortunately, I didn't check the hose, and the hose was really, really short. So let me show you guys what I went ahead and did. So the hose that they gave was only about less than three feet long. I did have an extra one, but this doesn't really extend that far. So unfortunately I couldn't keep it on the ground. And in order for me to reach up to the tent, I'm gonna go ahead and use plastic bins, but I have a piece of wood here. So it's gonna keep any the metal from touching the wood. I'm gonna test it and see uh, how it runs for a few hours before I actually leave it overnight, but that's kind of my solution. And I didn't have any tape, so I ended up cutting a piece of foil and using that to band-aid that together. So let's go ahead and take a look at the campsite.
All right. So this is how I have my heater MacGyvered up. The tube that was provided is only about three foot, but I was reluctant that I had another three feet, but it was still too short. So I had to pretty much put this together using a tin foil tray, one of those Weber uh, oil catchers. I have this sitting on top of my kitchen utensil drawers and then one of my plastic wood totes and I have it sitting on top of wood so that the vent doesn't melt the plastic it's MacGyver but hey that's how I'm sleeping tonight with the diesel heater Good morning guys. So first night with the diesel heater was a success. Uh, we slept for about 10 hours. It was probably in the mid 30s, lower 40s. And it ran all night. It was really, really warm. Um, I still have half a tank left. So that's pretty, pretty efficient. So let me take a look at the uh, battery pack now. So running the diesel heater all night. It barely knocked it down to about 25% uh, because I was probably at 95 when I started. So that is very, very uh, sufficient. Um, I still have my fridge on. So again, everything is great.
Yeah. Come back. So I'm at the Bob Roy mine. I'm gonna go ahead and use my flashlights. So I'm gonna turn off the flashlight real quick. So you can still see. But I can turn it to a spot. See further down. Well that's that guys. I'm sure it goes really far down, but we're straight. Out we go. Thank you. 